Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the SmackDown review. SmackDown was from the LDLC Arena in Lyon, France. And the show just ended. SmackDown was taped tonight because, of course, they are in France. And this was the go-home show for Backlash, which is uh, tomorrow. And SmackDown tonight, I thought it was a very good show tonight. The crowd there in France was electric throughout the night. This was one of the best crowds uh, in the while, overseas. Now I'm like, wow, overseas crowds? They are better than the crowds here. And I'm like, the crowds overseas know how to make some noise and, you know, like what they are seeing. So, but the back Backlash card is looking very predictable. I mean, look at the card. We are Cody Rhodes versus AJ Styles for the Undisputed WWE Championship. Who do you all think is going to win that? We got Damian Priest versus Jey Uso for the World Heavyweight Championship. We all know who's going to win that. Bailey versus Naomi versus Tiffany Stratton for the Women's uh, Championship, a triple threat match. We got Oscar and Kyrie Sane, the Kabuki Warriors versus Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill for the Women's Tag Team Championship. And we also have Randy Orton and Kevin Owens versus the Bloodline, Sol Sokoa and Tama Tonga. That's going to be the main event of the show. So yeah, the Backlash card is looking very predictable. I could predict, you know, who are going to win uh, these matches tomorrow. It just seems, Backlash seems like a throwaway show. But the crowd, from what we saw tonight on SmackDown, will probably be the same tomorrow for Backlash. It's going to be held in the same arena, the LDLC arena. So, you know, the crowd will probably make it a good show. But tonight on SmackDown, we had a eight-woman tag team match. Bianca Belair, Naomi, Jay Cargill, and Bailey took on Tiffany Stratton, Tiffy Time, and Damage Control, uh, Dakota Kai, Asuka, and Kairi Sane. We also had the Orders of Pain, Akam and Razor, versus the new Catch Republic, you know, Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn. We had LA Knight, yeah, versus Angel, you know, Angel Garza. And he was out there, of course, with Humberto and Electra Lopez, to which they changed up Humberto's name. Now they're calling him Berto. Why? And then in the main event, we had the WWE Tag Team Championship on the line where Austin Theory and Grayson Wall defend the titles against the Street Profits. But all in all, SmackDown tonight was a... Enjoyable, good show, in my opinion. And like I said, the crowd was hot throughout the two hours of the show. France really knew how to bring it. And, you know, for what we see tomorrow at Backlash, you know, if it's good and the crowd, you know, is, you know, hot like we saw tonight on SmackDown, without a doubt, WWE will return to France. Which I hope they do. But anyways, let's jump right into the review. SmackDown opened up tonight from Lyon, France with the eight-woman tag team match. Bianca Belair, Naomi, Jay Cargill, and Bailey. They took on Tiffany Stratton and Damage Control. You know, Dakota Kai... Asuka and Kairi Sane. And this was a decent eight women's tag team match here. Of course, the crowd, like I said, was hot throughout this match. You know, they were cheering for Bailey. They were doing, hey, hey, Bailey. Ooh, ah, I want to know. Will you be my girl? So the match ended up getting on the way. Naomi and Kairi Sane start off the match. Naomi ended up kicking Kairi Sane away. She ended up hitting Kyrie with a drop kick. 
Naomi ended up taking in Bianca. Bianca then ended up laying a moonsault on Kyrie Sane. Bianca ended up going for the cover, and Kyrie Sane ended up kicking out. Bianca then ended up delivering a vertical suplex to Kyrie Sane. Asuka ended up coming in, and Bianca ended up throwing Asuka to the outside. Kyrie Sane ended up coming back, delivering a back elbow to Naomi. Bailey ended up taking herself in, so Bianca and Bailey started arguing. Asuka ended up pulling Bianca to the outside. Tiffany Stratton was then tagged in. Tiffany Stratton ended up pinning Bailey with a spine buster. Stratton ended up going for the cover, and Bailey ended up kicking out. And then SmackDown went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, we had Asuka and Kairi Sane, the Kabuki Warriors. They double teamed Bailey. Asuka ended up going for the cover, and Bailey ended up kicking out. Tiffany Stratton was then tagged in. Stratton started stomping away on Bailey. Dakota Kai, Kairi Sane, and Asuka were exchanging quick tags to each other, to all three. And they all end up being down on Bailey. You know, damage control. Asuka ended up going for the cover, and Bailey ended up kicking out. Stratton was then tagged back in. Stratton ended up slamming Bailey into the corner. Stratton ended up delivering an elbow to Bailey's face, and then Stratton ended up pinning Bailey with an Alabama slam. Stratton ended up going for the cover, and Naomi came in and broke up the pin. Stratton delivered a forearm onto Jay Cargill. Knocking Cargill off the ring apron. Stratton ended up also knocking Naomi off the ring apron. But Bailey ended up delivering a backdrop on Stratton. Bailey ended up looking at Bianca to make the tag. But Bailey ended up tagging Jay Cargill instead. So looks like there's no tension there with Bailey and Bianca. So Cargill. Ended up coming in. She delivered a pump kick onto Kyrie Sane. Cargo ended up choke slamming uh, uh, Kyrie Sane onto Asuka. And then she ended up delivering a backbreaker onto Dakota. Bianca was then tagged in. Jade ended up hitting Dakota with a power bomb. Cargo ended up lifting Bianca up, slammed Bianca onto Dakota. So we had uh, Cargo end up going for the cover. Kairi Sane broke up the pin. So all eight women at this point in the match were in the ring. And they all began fighting. Bianca ended up pinning Dakota with the KOD. And Bianca ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Bailey, Naomi, Bianca Belair, and Jay Cargill ended up winning the match. Overall, decent eight-woman tag team match it was. You know, like I said, Bailey and Bianca... I don't know where, you know, it's going to go. You know, they had a little tension. You know, Bailey didn't want to tag in Bianca, but she made the tag to Jay Cargill. And you had, you know, Bailey and uh, Bianca. You know, they were, you know, bumping heads at each other. They were arguing. So, we're going to see where that's going to go. Like I said, overall... Decent eight women's tag team match it was. So then we had Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. They were backstage. Both Theory and Waller, they insulted the audience. And they ended up saying that it smells like smoke. Because that is what the Street Profits want. They have to saying after tonight, they will show everyone that they are the smoke. There you go. Little uh, backstage promo from the WWE Tag Team Champions, Theory and Waller. And then as SmackDown came back from the commercial, we saw Kayla Braxton. Kayla Braxton was backstage with Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill. Cargill ended up telling Kayla Braxton that they are always confident. And Bianca ended up saying to Braxton that she is sick of talking about damage control. And that she is ready to be done with them. So Bailey and Naomi were seen next to Cargill and Bianca. Bianca ended up looking at Bailey and she kept saying that she hopes that she will hopefully be done 
with damage control. So pretty much that was basically that. But without a doubt, you know, I could sense that Cargill and Bianca Belair will will win the uh, the women's tag team titles tomorrow at Backlash. They will defeat the Kabuki Warriors. That's how the way I'm predicting it. But who knows? And then we saw Carmelo Hayes. Carmelo Hayes was backstage with Nick Aldis. Carmelo ended up telling Nick Aldis that last week he almost beat Cody Rhodes. And that and he ended up declaring himself for the King of the Ring tournament. So Carmelo Hayes is going to be in the King of the Ring tournament. So in came Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley and Carmelo Hayes both end up shaking hands. Lashley ended up congratulating Carmelo Hayes on being drafted to SmackDown. Lashley ended up telling Carmelo that if he needs any advice to call him. To which Carmelo Hayes ended up telling Lashley that he will be good and that he was a first round draft pick last week and that he almost beat Cody and he has it figured out. So Lashley ended up telling Carmelo that it's not about the shots you take, but how much you land. Carmelo Hayes ended up asking Lashley when was the last time he shot his shot. He was, you know, talking to Lashley about that. So Lashley ended up stopping Carmelo Hayes, ended up telling uh, Carmelo that he has free advice for him, and that is to watch out as to who he disrespects. So pretty much that was that. So maybe we're going to get, you know, Carmelo Hayes, Bobby Lashley match. You know, maybe. And how this uh, played out here. Well, I will want to see it. And as SmackDown came back from the commercial, we had Orders of Pain, Aka and Razor. And they were accompanied by Karrion Cross, Paul Ellerin, and Scarlett. And they ended up taking on the new Catch Republic, Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne. And this was a good match here. This was a good tag team match. Pete Dunne and Akam ended up starting off the match. Pete Dunne delivered a kick to Akam. And then he delivered a drop kick. Pete Dunne then delivered some drop kicks to Akam. He ended up going for an arm bar, but Akam caught Pete Dunne. Tyler Bate was then tagged in. And Pete Dunne and uh, Tyler Bate end up double teaming on Akam in the corner. Tyler Bate delivered a run European uppercut to Akam. He ended up going for another uppercut, but Akam ended up laying out Tyler Bate with a clothesline. Razor was then tagged in, and the Ultimate of Pain end up double teaming on Tyler Bate. Razor ended up going for a suplex, but Tyler Bate delivered an elbow to Razor's face. Tyler Bate ended up going for a suplex, but Razor ended up lifting Tyler Bate up onto his shoulders. Pete Dunne was then tagged in. He ended up hitting uh, Razor with a stomp off the second rope. Akam ended up getting the ring, and we had Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne end up throwing Akam to the outside. Tyler Bate delivered a cannonball onto uh, both Akam and Razor on the outside. Tyler Bate ended up throwing Akam back into the ring. So Tyler Bate ended up hitting an elbow off the top rope to Akam. He then ran toward Akam, but Akam ended up throwing Tyler Bate into the turnbuckle. And then SmackDown went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Akam and Tyler Bate, they were, you know, still in the ring. Akam ended up having Bate in a bear hug. Bate ended up squeezing out of the bear hug, but Akam ended up lifting Tyler Bate up. Tyler Bate ended up hitting Akam with a drop kick. Razor was then tagged in. Tyler Bate ended up hitting Razor with a clothesline. Pete Dunne was then tagged in. Pete Dunne hit Razor with a kick to the side of his head. And Pete Dunne delivered a drop kick to Razor. Akam was then knocked to the outside. Pete Dunne ended up going for the cover on Razor, but Razor ended up kicking out. Pete Dunne climbed to the top rope. He ended up going for the moonsault. And Razor moved out of the way. Pete Dunne landed on his feet. Tyler Bay was then tagged in. 
And so Bate and Dunn end up double teaming on Razor. Bate end up lifting Razor onto the shoulders, and he up doing the airplane spin. So then Tyler Bate end up slamming Razor. Pete Dunn was then tagged back in. Tyler Bate then delivered a shooting star onto Razor, and then Pete Dunn delivered the run and knee. So we had Pete Dunn end up going for the cover. Aikum broke up the pin. Razor ended up grabbing uh, both uh, Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn. But Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn end up snapping Razor's fingers and they knocked him to the outside. Pete Dunn ended up running to the ropes and Scarlett got on the ring apron. Scarlett ended up stopping Pete Dunn. Tyler Bate was on the outside. Karen Cross ended up throwing Bate on the outside. Pete Dunn deliver a splash onto Karrion Cross. Pete Dunn end up getting in the ring, and both Aikum and Razor end up double teaming on Pete Dunn. They lifted Pete Dunn up and slammed him onto the canvas. Razor end up going for the cover, and there you go. The also the pain end up winning the match thanks to the distraction by Scarlett and also to the distraction by Karrion Cross, where uh, Tyler Bate end up getting thrown by Karrion Cross on the outside. But overall, good mat, good tag team match. And then we saw Nick Aldis. Nick Aldis was backstage, and Paul Eamon ended up coming into Nick Aldis' office. Paul Eamon ended up asking Aldis if he got his memo. Aldis ended up saying that he did receive the memo, and the request was denied. So... All this end up asking Paul Heyman why he would remove Kevin Owens and Randy Orton from their match tomorrow at Backlash. Paul Heyman end up saying that it is for both Owens and Orton's sake. Paul Heyman end up saying what happens to them is no longer on his conscience. He up saying what happens to Orton and Owens is on Aldis's conscience. So all this end up asking Paul Heyman if this was by order of the tribal chief. And Paul Heyman ended up saying, that is not funny. Nick Aldis ended up asking Paul Heyman if he is in charge. Paul Heyman ended up saying to Aldis that there is a difference between being in charge and in control. Paul Heyman ended up saying that he has not spoken to Roman Reigns since WrestleMania. Nick Aldis ended up saying that when Roman pulled himself out of the draft, how did he do that? If he didn't talk to Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman ended up saying to Nick Aldis that he pulled Roman Reigns out of the WWE draft. So Paul Heyman ended up telling Nick Aldis that he has to understand what is happening. And that he had no choice. He ended up saying that he couldn't subject Roman to the chaos of what is going on in the bloodline. And that Nick Aldis cannot subject Owens and Orin to the bloodline tomorrow. So Nick Aldis ended up saying that if Paul Heyman can pull Roman out of the draft, he should try pulling Randy Orton and Kevin Owens out of the match at Backlash. And he can try that next on the RKO show. So pretty much that was basically that. We got an explanation of why Roman was not a part of the WWE draft. And that was Paul Heyman that pulled Roman out of the draft. And that... He has, not spoke, he has not spoken to Roman since WrestleMania. And then as SmackDown came back from the commercial, we had the RKO show. Randy Orton ended up coming out. You know, got a big pop from the crowd there in France. Of course, like I said, France was alive tonight for those two hours of SmackDown. So, we had the fans, they were singing along to Orin's uh, theme, and out came Kevin Owens. So, the fans there, they cheered both for Orin and Owens. Owens got on the mic, and he started speaking in French, which the crowd loved that. He ended up saying that it is very appreciated, and he welcomes everyone to the first RKO show. 
So Orin ended up getting on the mic. He ended up saying, normally you have to convince him to be on the show. But he did not need any convincing because the fans are amazing. He ended up saying that he did not need any uh, convincing to team up with Owens tomorrow at Backlash. Kevin Owens ended up saying that he knows Orin has some concerns about their guests. But he started to get a lot of calls from a number he did not want to answer. He ended up saying Wednesday at 4 a.m. He answered. And that was when Paul Heyman asked to be a guest on their show. Owens ended up saying that Paul Heyman had something very important to tell them. So Orin ended up saying that he would like to introduce Paul Heyman to the RKO show. And out came Paul Heyman. So Paul Heyman came out, he did his whole shtick, you know, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Heyman. He ended up saying that he is WWE's undisputed wise man. He ended up saying tonight, he comes out with respect, admiration, and wisdom. So Paul Heyman then got into the ring. Kevin Owens ended up telling Orin that he can't just RKO Paul Heyman right away. Orin ended up saying that he's more of an out-of-nowhere kind of guy. So that's when the fans started chanting RKO. Playman then remained on the ring apron. He kept telling the fans, there will be no RKOs this evening. To which Orin ended up saying that he begs to differ. Playman ended up saying that he understands why they would doubt him. And that led the fans chanting, we want Roman. Playman ended up telling them he wants Roman too. He ended up telling the fans that he has great respect for both Orrin and Kevin Owens. When they stepped in the ring with Roman, it was competition, and there was a title on the line. He ended up saying, but the rules with Sosokoa and Tamatanga are different. So Ployman ended up telling Orrin and Owens to do a favor and back out of the match. Orrin ended up calling Ployman the biggest piece of trash in the industry. Kevin Owens ended up saying that he can't give them advice concerning everything around him is falling apart. Orrin ended up asking Paul Heyman who was the true tribal chief. And that Paul Heyman ended up saying that he is put in a bad position. Paul Heyman ended up saying that the whole world knows there is only one tribal chief. And that led to Sozakoa and Tamatanga end up attacking both Randy Orrin and Kevin Owens from behind. So we had all four men fight to the outside. Officials end up coming to break this brawl up. We had Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. They end up taking out Sol Sokoa. And they end up taking out Tamatanga and the officials. So they end up standing in the ring. You know, Kevin Owens and Orton. And Randy Orton's music ended up hitting. And... That was basically that. But overall, I thought this was a you know decent you know segment here with Kevin Owens and Randy Orton in the RKO show, Playman being the guest on the show, you know saying oh you know Orton and uh, Owens should back out of this match between you know Solsko and Tamatanga. But that was that. And then we had the Street Profits backstage. They end up talking about how they are going to become new WWE Tag Team Champions. Yeah. Not happening, guys. Not now. And then we had LA Knight. Yeah! Versus Angel. Of course, Angel was accompanied by Electra Lopez, Santos Escobar, and Humberto, which now... They're calling him Berto. Berto. Yeah, they're calling him Berto now. Why? And this was a a decent match here. Match ended up getting on the way. Fans were chanting for Ellie Knight. Ellie Knight got the biggest pop there uh, in France. So Knight... End up locking in a headlock on Angel. Knight ended up running to the ropes. He ended up pinned Angel with a show tackle. Knight then delivered a clothesline to Angel. After the clothesline, he threw Angel to the ropes. 
and he had pinned an Angel with a swing and neck breaker, and that led to Angel falling to the outside. Knight then went to the outside. He ended up slamming Angel head first onto the ring apron. Knight ended up getting the ring, and he clotheslined Angel back to the outside. Knight threw Angel back into the ring, and he delivered a suplex to Angel. Knight ended up going for the cover, and Angel ended up kicking out, which SmackDown went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Berto ended up distracting LA Knight, and Angel delivered a right hand to Knight. Angel threw Knight to the ropes, but Knight came back, delivered a flying clothesline to Angel. Knight ended up delivering a power slam to Angel, which was followed up by a jumping elbow. And then he went for the Blunt Force Trauma, the BFT. Knight ended up going for the cover. And there you go. LA Knight ended up winning the match. No surprise there. Post-match, Knight grabbed the mic. And he kept saying, all around the world, it's the same song. He kept saying, another SmackDown. Another dummy dumped on his head. He kept saying that if he wanted to be cliche, he would say this is his ring, but he won't say it, and that he will make this his ring. So Ellie Knight ended up announcing that he's entering the King of the Ring tournament. So that's good. Ellie Knight is going to be in the King of the Ring tournament. Santos Escobar got on the ring apron. He kept saying it is impressive. To which the fans were chanting, you suck to Escobar. Escobar ended up saying that Knight keeps talking and talking. But at King of the Ring, while Knight will be busy running his mouth, he will be winning. So Knight ended up asking the fans if he should keep talking. And the fans end up saying, yeah. So Knight ended up telling Santos Escobar he will hear everybody saying, L, A, Knight, yeah. And then Knight threw the mic at Escobar, and pretty much that was basically that. So, Knight is entering the King of the Ring tournament. Hopefully, this King and Queen of the Ring will be enjoyable and decent. And then we have Byron Saxton. Byron Saxton was backstage with Carlito. So Carlito ended up telling Byron that he has been away from WWE for many years. And all he ever wanted was another WrestleMania moment with his family, the LWO. Carlito ended up saying that when Ray challenged Santos and Dominic at WrestleMania, he thought Ray would have picked him. But instead, Ray ended up picking Dragon Lee. And Carlito was like, that was not cool. Carlito ended up saying that he took it into his own hands. So when came Dragon Lee, Dragon Lee attacked Carlito, and officials were there to break it up between Carlito and Dragon Lee. And pretty much that was basically that. So we're going to get Carlito versus Dragon Lee. And Carlito, you know, really needed this, you know, heel turn. Carlito works best as a heel than a baby face. You know, we've seen it back then. You know, Carlito... Ever since he returned, he's been on he's been on the losing streak. So, him turn heel, this is gonna benefit him. Yeah, decent uh, interview with Carlito. And then we had the main event: Austin Theory and Grayson Waller versus the Street Profits, Montez Ford, Angelo Dawkins. This was for the tag team championship. And this was a decent match here. So Grayson Waller ended up delivering a right hand onto Montez Ford before the bell rang. Theory ended up delivering a right hand onto Dawkins. So the men were in the ring. The bell ended up ringing. The match got on the way. Waller was then tagged in. He ended up throwing Dawkins into the ropes. But Dawkins delivered a spinning back elbow to Waller. Montez Ford was then tagged in. He had hit in uh, Waller with a drop kick. Theory ended up getting to the ring, and the Prophets end up slamming uh, Theory onto the canvas. 
Montez Ford delivered a rock bottom onto Waller, to which Dawkins was then tagged in. Dawkins climbed to the top rope. He had pinned a swanton onto Waller. Theory grabbed Waller to the outside. Montez Ford ended up tagging in. Montez Ford delivered a nice flying senton over the top rope onto both Theory and Waller. Ford then threw Waller back into the ring. Dawkins tagged in. The Prophets end up double teaming on Waller in the ring. Dawkins delivered a spinning back elbow. He ended up going for the cover, and Waller ended up kicking out. So then as SmackDown came back from the commercial, Montez Ford was in the ring, and Austin Theory was also in there. Ford delivered a springboard back elbow off the top rope onto Theory. Ford ended up going for the cover, and Theory ended up kicking out. Dawkins was then tagged in, and we had uh, the Street Proverbs were trying to double team on Theory, but Theory landed on his feet, and Waller was then tagged in. Waller was on the top rope, but Montez Ford ended up turning that around. Waller ended up walking the ropes. He ended up going for a drop kick. Montez Ford ended up moving, and Waller ended up landing a drop kick onto Dawkins. Theory was then tagged in. He rolled into the ring. Dawkins ended up pushing Theory down in midair. So we had Dawkins end up slamming Waller. And Ford was then tagged in. Ford ended up climbing the top rope. And we had both the Street Profits end up hitting Theory with a blockbuster. Ford ended up going for the cover. And Theory ended up kicking out. So we had the ref end up checking up on Montez Ford. And Wall ended up hitting Dawkins with the flatliner. We had Theory end up going for the cover on Dawkins. And there you go. Austin Theory and Grayson Waller end up winning the match, retaining the WWE Tag Team Championship. Overall, decent match it was. Obviously, we all knew that Theory and Waller were, gonna t were going to retain the titles. And then... We had AJ Styles. AJ Styles ended up coming down to the ring. And then Cody's music ended up hitting as SmackDown came back from the commercial. So we had the Undisputed WWE Champion coming into the ring. Fans were chanting Cody. So Cody got on the mic. He ended up asking the fans in French what they want to talk about. So Styles ended up saying that it's as if Cody is not focused on him. And that Cody is more focused on the fans. Cody ended up saying that he grew up watching Styles. And Styles ended up cutting him off. He ended up saying that he doesn't need that. He may be older than Cody, but he is still in his prime. Styles wanted to say that Cody had the pet laid out for him. Because everyone wanted the son of the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, including WWE. Styles ended up saying that they welcomed him with open, with open fans. He ended up telling Cody that Cody loved it here until things got rough and he couldn't handle it, and he left. He ended up saying that his decision, one that Styles never got to make because he was kept out of WWE for years when he got here, and that he was not welcomed with open arms like Cody. Styles ended up saying that he had to prove himself all by himself. Styles ended up telling Cody that Cody had legends watching his back at WrestleMania for him to finish his story. He ended up saying a bunch of guys he has beaten before. He beat them all the same way he is going to beat him at Backlash. Styles ended up saying that he will find his way to the top again and remind everyone that he is phenomenal. Cody ended up saying that Styles' reputation is unmatched. He ended up saying that he endured a lot of mistakes to stand here as champion. And his first title match is against Styles. Cody ended up saying that Styles is and forever will be phenomenal. But tomorrow, he won't look at him as phenomenal. He is looking at him as his first. And that's too sweet. So Styles raised his fingers for the two sweet, as did Cody. So Styles slapped Cody in the face, and Styles left the ring. And pretty much that was basically how the segment ended. It was a uh, 
face to face between Styles and Cody before the match tomorrow at Backlash for the Undisputed WWE Championship, which obviously Cody is going to retain. Styles is not winning the uh, the title. And then we went backstage, and we saw Randy Orton, Kevin Owens, Sosakoa, and Tama Tonga. And these guys were fighting backstage. Officials were there to break it up. And so that was how SmackDown went off the air. Overall, this was a enjoyable, good SmackDown tonight. The crowd there in France was hot throughout the two hours. They made noise. They did not sit there on their hands. And they weren't in a coma. You know, this was one of the best you know, crowds overseas, you know, for a SmackDown show. You know, I know the UK, you know, they make noise, but France bought it tonight. But overall, good SmackDown it was. But anyways, that's it for the SmackDown review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. I won't be reviewing Backlash tomorrow because uh, I'll be at work. It starts at 1 o'clock. Uh, but if you guys haven't checked out uh, my previous video, I did a watch along on Wednesday for AW Dynamite. I went live for it. So, you know, check that out if uh, you guys haven't seen it. And until next video, I'll see you all later.